Donald Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, is with us. Kellyanne, good morning. Good to good see morning, you. Good morning, Willie. Let's start with what we know about this, which is not very much. We know that in the course of investigating Anthony Weiner, the FBI found several emails, thousands of emails, they yeah, say, many. according to NBC's reporting. But they don't know the content. In fact, haven't even read them. Last night, Donald Trump said this is the biggest scandal since Watergate. Do you all know something about the content of the emails that the rest of the people, the public, even the FBI doesn't know? No, of course not. But what we do know is when Hillary Clinton says this is unprecedented, what we should all remind ourselves is what's unprecedented and indeed unnecessary is her having that private server in the first place. She set off this chain of events and she can't escape that. She's playing the victim now. They're doing an all-out assault on FBI Director Jim Comey. I mean, really shooting the messenger plus a full body slam all day yesterday. And I think that's a risky strategy as well. But let's remind ourselves, but for Hillary Clinton violating longstanding policy, setting up this private server, deleting 33,000 emails, failing to turn over an additional 17,000, bleaching them so that they would be permanently deleted, we, we wouldn't be in this position. And by the way, Willie, she could just ask Uma Abedin, what is in those emails? She, she can ask her right now and tell all of us. She can call into to the Today Show, I'd imagine, right now and tell you, Willie Geist, here's what's in those emails. You, this is an open investigation. Uh, it's on the eve of an election. That's why the DOJ recommended to Director Comey not to proceed with this letter because everyone knew it would be leaked out to the public. If you were on the other side of this, would you think this was the right thing to do on the eve of an election, to be so vague about it without knowing the content? Well, Comey was in an impossible position, from my view, had he sat on the information, he may well have been interfering with the election as well. Because if you go and you vote for Hillary Clinton, she becomes the president of the United States. Then you, this, this investigation is reopened, or I guess the separate investigation is launched, Willie. And then what? She's already president, and she's under this cloud of corruption that really has defined the last couple of years of Hillary Clinton. The country's gotten whiplash over the last 48 hours yes. because it was just July when your campaign was going after James Comey, when he announced that there should be no prosecution. That was his recommend, recommendation to the attorney general in that case. Donald Trump suggested the process was rigged there, that in fact, James Comey was acting with the DOJ on behalf of Hillary Clinton to help her win the election. So have you changed your opinion about Jim Comey and his ethics? Uh, no, these are two separate things, and here's why. On July 5th, Jim Comey came forward and told the public, we're not going to prosecute Hillary Clinton. Then he went on to completely undercut that conclusion by calling her reckless and careless in her handling of the situation. Two days later, goes in front of Congress under oath, Willie, and says, well, she didn't have one server, she had many, excuse me, one device, she had many devices. They destroyed evidence. Yes, in fact, under oath, yes, in fact, there was national security and classified information being exchanged on that server. So he undercut his own judgment. This is different. This is a separate investigation, and I think he was in an impossible situation. Let's, um, let's not let him be the victim too much either, though, in that had he done a thorough job to begin with and made sure that device had been handed over, then maybe we wouldn't be in this position. But that's also on Huma. She signed, as I understand from the evidence, she's, she clearly signed that she, she confirmed that she had turned over all the devices. That was what was demanded of Hillary's team. And yet we have one with maybe 15,000 emails. Um, I think it's incredibly ironic that this spurs for, this stems from another investigation it has nothing to do with the Republican Party, the Trump campaign, into Anthony Weiner's right. sexing. So this is on do, them. Do you expect we'll learn the contents of those emails before Election Day? I have no idea. I, I know that the, the general uh, nature of these types of investigations is that they take a long time. So I think the Clinton campaign is pressuring Comey to do something that may not be possible, given the, simply given the short time. Let's talk about the Trump campaign's path to victory here. You know, as well as I do, looking at that map every day, that it's always been a tough path that there are many swing states that have gone toward Hillary Clinton that are swinging in her favor, leaning that way. Many people have pointed out, interesting, where Donald Trump is spending his time, places like Colorado, somewhere like Michigan, where Hillary Clinton, if you look at the polling averages, has pretty comfortable leads, Pennsylvania as well. Are you spending your time in the right places? Yes, and he does up to three different states per day. Um, she doesn't do that usually. And so he was in three states yesterday, three states the day before. He'll be in a few states today, including New Mexico, where the public polls have tightened of late, where, where we see things internally, Michigan on Monday. Um, but he'll go back to Pennsylvania many times. So we see the map as we've always seen it. Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, Iowa look good for us. And then we add to that Nevada, maybe New Hampshire, Maine too. And then we've got a lot of other places that we're going. Um, so is your internal polling then different than the public polling? Because you mentioned New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Michigan. She has 
leads in almost every poll. She does indeed, but she never gets beyond 46 percent practically anywhere. And if I were the Clinton campaign and Friday happened to me amidst the fact that my candidate has such a, a, such a tough ceiling in most of these statewide polls, I would worry because if you're an undecided voter, Willie, what are you going to learn about Hillary Clinton in the next nine days that's going to make you say, you know what, I actually do like her and I do trust her. I've been wrong all along. Those undecided voters generally go against the incumbent go against the status quo, go against the person who represents more of the same. So we feel bold, and we also we also like the early returns, the information we're getting from the RNC every day. They provide us with information about the early returns compared to where we were in 2012. Look at the front page this morning of the Washington Post, a story uh, from a reporter, David Farenthold, who's been doing exhaustive reporting on Donald Trump's charitable giving over the years. The conclusion in this piece after months of reporting is that Donald Trump basically hasn't given as much as he's claimed he's given. There's a simple way for us to know how much Donald Trump has given, and that would be to release his taxes. You've made it a year and a half without releasing them. Why won't you release his tax return? For the same reason Mr. Trump always states, Willie, which is the lawyers and the accountants have said, don't do it while you're under an active audit. But he has, he has put forth for the public to see, they can go look at it right now, a 104-page financial disclosure form that includes a great deal of information. That's not tax returns. Well, that journalist in that paper are way against Mr. Trump. We know that. But uh, I also just want to say from my personal knowledge and from, from this man is a very generous person with his time and with his money and has helped a, a lot of people over the years uh, that foundation the, the Trump Foundation no one's on the payroll no family member there's no overhead um, you acknowledge, the money. though, Kellyanne, that the IRS has said he could put forth his well, tax that's returns. That's just the advice of his attorneys that's are saying. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. That, that's the same organization that has audited him. So, of course, they think that he can put them forward. But he has advice from his accountants and his lawyers. And I think, you know, talking about disclosing one's tax returns versus here we are under the second FBI investigation in, in a year. Uh, most people I know are not under FBI investigation, let alone two of them. I think people will look at Hillary Clinton and say, this, is my, this has been my hesitation, my reluctance about voting for her all along, and I simply can't elect somebody. It's too risky of a choice. Somebody is under this count, constant cloud of corruption because she does not believe in full disclosure and transparency. So you're not going to surprise us in nine days and release the tax return? We're going to surprise everyone and win the election. Kellyanne Conway, Trump campaign manager. Thanks so much. Thanks, Willie. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.